Every one of you watching this screen, look out. Anything can happen in the next half hour. What did I tell you about cartoons? They've got a lot of brains, and they've got a lot of kutzpah. Tell me how comic books make you feel, Dave. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious, and don't call me sure. Hello, this is Franz Cantor, cartoonist, illustrator, toon talker, and I'm here with... Jim Bridges, and I'm one of the founders of the Australian Cartoon Museum mm -hmm. here at downtown Docklands, Melbourne. Yes. On this terrible, terrible grey day. Oh, well, it is a pretty grey day, yes, outside, but inside we have this. So this is yes. a book bite we're going to review. It's cold outside, but it's red hot with red hot riding hood here. Yes. Or her name is called Red, actually. Yes. And this is Tex Avery. We're about to do a book on Tex Avery. Yes, Tex Avery, the great mm. animation director from the golden age of the Hollywood cartoon. And this is his work he did in MGM. Yes. So um, let's get into it. So Tex Avery is responsible for, um, he's probably the second most influential uh, animator or cartoonist uh, next to Walt Disney. Mm. Um, and it's because primarily of, well, actually these three, the dynamics of these, Droopy and... Uh, oh, hang on. And Red oh, well, and this, the, is, this is MGM, but what about, Bug, what about Bugs Bunny? What well, about, yeah, Bugs Bunny as what well. What about Daffy? Well. Oh, yeah, this is... Um, where is it? This is a cartoon that he did... Um, this is a larger version. At Hannah's. Yeah, when he was working for Hanna Barbera. Yeah, so what this is, is a model sheet, but yeah. it's, it, it's a biography. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> it's a biography. He's got Droopy's backside. Mm. He's only three and a three, three and a bit uh, heads high. And different kinds of reaction shots. Yes, yes. And of course, um, he and cute props. See the cute props: the yeah. anvil, the bomb, the stick of giant dynamite. Yeah, short steps. Yeah, every four it's frames. Actually, referring to uh, Droopy and. Um, Blackie. And you know, that's what happens when you hit on the head, your whole body shatters. So these are all his uh, gags that he invented. Mm. Front, side, back, top, bottom. <laughs> mm. So, um, without further ado, let's uh, let's get into the um, into the thing. This is a beautiful uh, uh, forward by uh, Bill Hanner. Um, yeah, where he's he a very close friend. Do you want to talk about that? He, well, Bill he, Hanner he, is half of Hanna-Barbera, of course, and... Um, he, uh, he, he was talks about carpooling that. with yeah. him in the 40s. That's the story, yeah. So um, then they loved him because he had he was full of gags, you know, and animators live on gags. So the whole idea of, uh, like, coming up with what-ifs, you know, animation, he, he was pretty much uh, in interested in the concept of animation being able to do anything. And uh, because of that, he pushed animation to unbelievable... Um, uh, yeah, he did. Directions. He, yeah, he, he certainly, certainly did. So there's a lot of a bit of writing here, and let's get yeah. into. Um, this is this, the sort of reaction. Yeah, this is the wolf. The the two main characters. This is from um, uh, MGM. Yeah, all this is MGM. And yeah, so this is his he first was at MGM foray. for 14 years. Mm. And um, the uh, these are his. Um, model sheets which he, he drew is responsible for the antics or the level of the takes the level of the extremes of animation so where Disney had the ability to you know they had the nine they had the, the um, nine old men making the 12 principles of animation say mm. they those principles of animation were in common usage by all animators they're the first ones that kind of wrote it down and yes. codified it almost um, but they, even within the genre, within the world of Disney, they only had one character which could uh, actually um, use to explain the 12 principles in and of himself, and that would be Goofy. Uh, Goofy, of course, was uh, 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 Disney's answer to Tex Avery without actually employing Tex Avery. That's right. So they could never get this level of zaniness no. in the characters, 
even with Goofy, but Goofy had the ability to, to employ 12 principles. None of the others could do that at the same time. So he invented um, Droopy and the wolf. Yeah. And Red. Red. Called Red. Yeah, so he's... And this is a typical trope of his. Yeah, so th this would be, you know, as used in The Mask with um, uh, Bill, um, Jim Carrey. Yeah. You know, these extremes of character expressions... They're all pinched from text the double takes in that and film. The, yeah, you know, and, and the, the, the mouth gags. dropping to the floor. Yeah. All those things in the, in the mask straight out of Tex Avery. Yeah, so uh, rather than having uh, a reaction, he would push it and push it and push it and keep pushing the reaction until he got something that was extraordinary. So Examples, you know, he's, here he is lusting after this woman. Yeah, so the eyes got bigger and bigger and bigger until the pupils actually left the eyes and then bounced back and had a, 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 a spring effect, like, you know, for... Um, and the fact like that... it was a drum. The fact that these are actually holes, <laughs> that's mm. quite funny. Mm. And this is what he's looking at. Yeah, so it was a striptease. Red hot, red hot riding hood. Yeah, it was like a burlesque show. Yeah. You know, it was beautifully uh, animated by... Um, uh, um, oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Yeah. It would tell you there. Preston Blair. Preston Blair, of course. Yeah, yeah Preston Blair. This beautiful coquettish um, mm. uh, exaggerations. So I don't know what... Uh, I don't know what they were drinking or smoking, but they were pretty powerful stuff. Um, this book originally was put together by a Frenchman, mm. and he it was published in France, mm. and then it was republished about, oh, about eight years later with a different text by John Canemaker. So these are the backgrounds. These are the backgrounds. These are the, the of, you know, of, of Disney style backgrounds. Yeah, of Red Hot Riding Yeah, hood. beautiful watercolour. Yeah. And actually, his, these are the posters. His the, stuff was so zany. After a while, he just shorts. got rid of the backgrounds because he was a director, and he just yeah. got rid of the background. And he just had the, the zaniness going on. Mm. Who killed who? Yeah. Huh. Now that's that's typical. Yeah. Hands Stick up. up. So all of the actions were there. The re the reactions were there, but. He just pushed it to extremes. So without him, you wouldn't have things like Roger Rabbit, which is an extremely yeah. fluid mo uh, movie. Yeah. You know, animated by um, um, uh, Williams. Williams. Robert. Uh, Robert Williams. Mm. Yeah. Um. So all of these shorts you could probably find on a DVD, um, yeah. and they're well worth looking at. You could probably find some of these antics uh, around on on, on YouTube. YouTube? Yeah. yeah. So this is not in the 40s, obviously, 1940s. They're, they're salt and peppering each other because they're about to eat each other. Yeah. What's buzzing? Buzzers? Buzzards, yeah. yeah. So two vultures. Yeah. So you can, you, you can definitely see little bits of uh, Daffy Duck energy and, yeah. and um, Woody Woodpecker and things. He sees his partner as a finished uh, meal. Mm. Yeah, well, it was a common trope, yeah. you know, but here he's taken it to another extreme yeah. where the, the, the cooked chicken is like uh, sitting, you know, um, cross-legged. Mm. Relaxing, waiting yeah. for him, just waiting for him. This is squirry, squir <laughs> squirry, squirry, squirry squirrel was uh, squirry squirrel. another character. Yeah, that, like it was, it was kind of like uh, in, you know before they had Bugs Bunny, I, I guess. Um, squirry squirrel. No, had, uh, no, he came after. The same time, he came after. Oh, he came after. He came after because screwball squirrel. Yeah, 1944. Yeah, yeah, he, he came, came after. after. But I mean. Um, it was also animated by Preston Blair. Yeah. So they wanted a character that uh, had this um, nutty uh, characteristic and at the same time, you know, this um, exaggerated action that Daffy Duck had. So there was a lot of, uh, um, there was a lot of potential in uh, Screwball Squirrel. And there's the dog that chases him, I'd say. Yeah, so t with every um, uh, manic character, you have like a, a subdued character. So um, the dog, the hunting dog, would be the um, the best way of, um, of of matching that energy with something that's low energy. So um, Tex would have done this. Mm. He but would it's have designed to have these every, extreme expressions. Yeah, for the animators. Yeah, 
you know, the front, the back, the side, all that. You know. Yeah, this is his model sheet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He would also have examples. He would go over the drawings and um, overdraw the the antics. So he might have a hand at the some of the extremes as well. Yeah. The the ads uh, look pretty. They look like they're done by someone else. There's a mm. there's a a lack of, of elasticity in them. Well, the, there's yeah, but these are the ad. These are the posters that yeah. would go in the foyer. Yeah, and so you could see which uh, yeah. which is the um, here's the gag. It's a, yeah, it's a, which is the cartoon yeah. short that would go on yeah. with the movie. And this is this is I mean this is just pure. Mm. The reaction shots like that, they're just pure. Um, I've yeah, pure. well, he, he perfected these. These, yeah. these were like pushed yeah. um, uh, to his instructions, so they're very expressive, you know. So, here we go, Scruple Squirrel. That, um, that's a great Heel gag. Wather, that's a great film. It's a great gag. Yeah, this is a beautiful character, the Indian yeah. in Heel Wather. Yeah. He's got a lot of um, animatable possibilities. A lot of weight, squash and stretch. The shooting of Dan Magoo. Yeah, so it was, uh, you know, it was obviously a take on the shooting of Dan McGee, uh, which is a famous poem. By? I can't remember. Okay. And it's somebody it's... in the Yukon. This is his wolf character? Oh. Yeah. So yeah, this is in the in the in the show, in the film, that's, that's and he goes seat. through these different um, iterations. Yeah, that's so his that, seat. Mm, yeah. This is beautiful. Jerky these turkey. These are some key frames for um, yeah. the jerky turkey. Again, he's got the uh, this character from the Indian character. Yeah. Uh, now yeah. as a um, as a pilgrim. A pilgrim. Yeah. You've got to get that turkey for Thanksgiving Day. Mm. Yeah, it would probably have been aired at the holiday season, you know, probably at uh, Thanksgiving itself. So it's 40s because of the Zoot Suits? Yes. Mm. Well, Zoot Suits kind of represented the jazz era and the, you know, the, um, the, um, the, the street gangs. Yeah. Well, the end of the gangsters, war. The not gangsters, of, but sort of yeah, the, the hip guys, dudes. Yeah, the hip dudes on the corners standing yeah, around. Yeah, well, during you know? the war, actually, yeah. when the GIs were away. So that's an old... Um, that's a punched... Mod- that's yeah. a punched... Uh, it's fallen um, to pieces. Pen- uh, pencil, yeah. yeah. So, you know, these frames and would be um, uh, drawn up and then they would lay uh, a cell. cell. That's a cell. That's yeah. the cell there? Yeah. yeah, with paper at the back. Yeah. So they uh, they would lay the cell over the drawing and yeah. trace it in cleanup. So you get all of these beautiful red uh, pen yeah. lines. I prefer this. And then they'd flip it over and do yeah. the painting. Well, it's hard to animate that. I know, but I, I prefer the drawing. So it's a great gag. Like, hmm. Obviously, the horse stops and he goes flying off it. And yeah, the pulls choppers the teeth are connected. Out. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So the red character again is Wild now used wolfing. as a cowgirl. So she's still got that, uh, yeah, the red hair and the lipstick and the eyelashes and yeah. things like that. So <laughs> this picture. is Droopy's horse, of course, is a, a small horse to fit him. So Lonesome Lenny, How, where about this is still MGM? Yeah, okay. all this is MGM. Yeah. Yeah, Lonesome Lenny. These are these. He are was at MGM for about again. fourteen years, mm. um, and he came up with so many gags. Mm. I mean, a director didn't have to come up with gags, but he did. Mm. Is that is that extreme? Yeah. Hick chick. So these are typical of the you know the yeah. double takes and the the extreme takes that they would do reaction shots. Um, hip chick, of course, they're very much because uh, of the adult audience that you know the GIs yes. and, the, and the teenagers and adults and things. Yeah. You know, you take your date on a on a on a yeah. on a at a film to go to the film, and um, you get there early so that you can both enjoy the um, the shorts, mm. these cartoons. He's turned red into a chick. Yeah, they were a very big part of. Um, yeah. People's lives and their film experience. Great gags. A lot of people like, would only go there for just for this. Like, <laughs> look at all the mm. clock faces. 
Well, any gag you can amp, you yeah. can amp up. Just turn up the volume yeah. and create something that's more ex- more um, explicit of the of the idea of the gag. And just because you know, a lot of the gags were based on on really stupid premises. Yeah, and yeah. Puns. Like, here it is. Like he's, he's so shocked yeah. that. Oh, uh, this is the other thing too. Like yeah. Ren Stimpy with uh, you know uh, Chris Falusi. No take is done twice. So every time you do a take. You'd have a different variant, yeah. a variant on it, so that would, you know, that would be like a shock reaction to um, finding. Um, well, he keeps on running away from this guy, and uh, yeah, the, the can't get away from him. The Northwest Hounded Police. Yeah, and each of the gags yeah. get bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. So in the end, you know, um, I think he takes a plane and a ship and yeah. oh, a yeah. train and yeah. he goes somewhere else and he still gets caught. Yeah, he still gets caught. Um, and does that, I think this... the gag, at the, the really, at the real big gag at the end is there's like so many of uh, droopies. There's like 20 droopies. Yeah. So he could never have won anyway. No, no. This is a really funny. Um, That's the uh, the chicken, uh, the um, yeah, rolling up his sleeve. Yeah. So um, now look, this is interesting because this is little little um, hot stuff. Hot stuff, isn't it? Well, it's a flame. I know, but it's a character. I know, of a flame, but he looks like hot stuff. The ghost bear. that came out of that. You know? Yeah. So this is like a bear putting out flames, right? Yeah. That was his idea. Yeah. He's a ranger, red hot ranger. Yeah. Um, this is uh, Uncle Tom's Cabana. Yeah. This is, uh, what year is this, 1947? Uh, Cabana was... So a, again, yeah. using uh, racial stereotypes. Yeah. He did this a couple of a f- in a couple of films, yeah. actually, which is a little bit unkind. Well, um, it's hard to find these days because these things, um, you know... Well, be part of the band, so-called band cartoons, yeah. I suppose. Yeah, but you I know, mean, this is Hollywood eyes, like Cabana was uh, like a... a, a, a Uncle not, Tom's nightclub. Cabin is yeah, based I, on. I know, but... Cabana is... It's is like a Hollywood um, a hot musical. Spot. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. here she is. She's now a, a Southern Belle. Red's now a Southern Belle. Yeah. But again, yeah. she does a song and dance. Yeah. And, you know, and this is her um, thing. And that's Fats Waller, obviously. I don't know. I don't know what the refer- reference would be. Yeah. Slap Happy Lion, you know, this is again, you know, these are like things that they, they create these characters. Um, and sometimes you never see the light of day, but they're so brilliantly done. Oh, each one this is mouse. terrific, isn't it? Each one is terrific. Yeah. And they have such a profound effect on, yeah. on characters coming out later. Yeah. You know, the lions done by um, uh, Chuck Jones, for example. Yeah. You know, in the Bugs Bunny show. He swallows a ball or something. Yeah, I'm vaguely remembering. He's running around and a ball's crashing around. Yeah, well, you know, he, this, his work is the best way of describing cartoon physics. Yes. Cartoon physics is the physics of cartoons. Yeah. So the impossibility of, of, the, of the idea and the novelty of the idea, he was able to, you know, and that, that would that's a beautiful uh, sequence that where the characters. Um, Overtaken by the the ball, yeah. that he's is that a, is that a, a cannonball or a bomb? I forget. I think it might be. I, oh, I don't it, know. I think it might be a bomb. It doesn't yeah. make sense otherwise. Yeah, he's got to. Because why would he be scared of it? He's got to get away from it. So boom. <laughs> yeah. King, King size, size canary. canary so yeah. This is about. Um, you know these characters taking these growth serums or something yeah, that's right. to get bigger. So you know the cat gets in, um, the cat bullies the mouse. The mouse takes the serum, grows bigger. Yeah. The cat and the dog, and the yeah. cat grows bigger, and the dog. It's it's you know one upmanship. I yeah. think in the end they're both bigger than the planet. That's right. Um, it's it's typical of him. Instead of just putting a new gag in. He just milks the, the first gag and they just get bigger and bigger and bigger and, and outrageously bigger, you know? Yeah. <laughs> sandpaper. Yeah. Like the character would get hit in the face by sandpaper or oh, fly no, paper. Fly paper. Fly paper. Yeah, rips yeah. it off, takes yeah. his face with it, yeah. and of course that blinks. Yeah, that that blinks. Yeah. yeah. And of course, what ply a price fleetum. Yeah. So these little fleas, like, uh, you know, these little animals they have, uh, they live on this, on the bum. Uh, who's a dog? So there's a lot of. Um, there seems to be a lot of either, uh, like Warner Brothers did a lot of farm animals. Yeah. MGM used to do a lot of bums for yeah. some reason. 
I don't know what the thing was. That's a caricature of um, Tex. Mm. It's all signed by the um, the people he worked with. And a ducky New Year. Have a ducky New Year. Yeah. yeah. It's early bugs. Mm. It's, not, it's not really, but you know. Oh, Smellbound. Was that based on the Hitchcock no, movie? It? Spellbound. Mm. Maybe, yeah. Well, it's, got a, out it's got a skunk in it. Yeah. It's just pun. But they, they just do puns. Yeah. That's the concept. That's the idea of cartoons. Puns work yeah. in cartoons. Yeah. Well, they do, but, I mean, they really work with this guy because mm. he... A lot of his ideas were, were corny, mm. Mm. but but they worked. I mean, in other cartoons, they're just corny, but they, they work beyond corny. You know, they went past corny. Yeah. Little Lucky Ducky. ducky. Yeah. This is, look at this, Technicolor ends here, look. Mm. He's black and white. Yeah, this, <laughs> the, 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 was a common He's trait here. of text to, to break the, yes. the, the wall. Yes. Between when the, the characters and... lean over and talk to the audience, that's Tex Avery. Mm. He's the one who started all that. Mm. Mm. And look, look at this. The hand is honking its own horn and, mm. and he's the pulling his whistles. own whistle. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny, look at that. Mm. He's pulling his ears and he's turning it into a... And that's a siren. Mm. And here she is, here's red again. Yeah. And that's the, that's the ink, the ink line underneath. And then they flip it around like this and paint the back. Mm. And this is how it would end up. Um, bad luck. Like he, he, invented, he, he invented Butch. Mm. The, um, well, the dog uh, in but the Droopy Butch, was Blackie or Butch. He yeah. was either called but, that. But Butch was in, in all the... Like, the Butch was character the was in all studios, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah, yeah. This is a incredibly beautiful. This is coming up, poster for this. But this uh, bullfight um, Oh, you talk about this all amazing. the time. Yeah. This is the... You know, you, you the, the bullfight in... Look, Bugs Bunny did bullfights. Yeah. But the bullfight in Droopy, which, uh, what was it called? Senior Droopy. Um, they also had uh, um, Ida Lupino, I think, as a, as a real star in the film appearing because he wins a date with Ida Lupino. So is she animated or she... No, was... she's real. Oh, okay. Yeah, because MGM did... Um... Tom and Jerry yeah. are dancing with um, Gene Kelly and um, Esther Williams. Yeah, yeah. So you know, it, it, this it's an absolutely brilliant film. Nothing compares to not even the Bugs Bunny one, which in, in, uh, actually was uh, animated by Chuck Jones. It was. That's saying something. Yeah, and it, they did it twice. Oh, this is the this is the Home of Tomorrow. This is the Home of Tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. there's some of the cells from Home of Tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> two of the, the cells that were that were used in it, and a lot of the animation was very. Um, it was just illustration, two frames. That's yeah. almost Tom. Yeah, wax to. Yeah, it's Tom, almost Tom. I mean, the wax to witches. Is 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 um, you know that's Blackie again or yeah. Butch. Yeah. Either Blackie or Butch. He yeah. had a the same uh, name for the same character. So um, I think the the story of this wax the witch is they both get left a, a mansion and millions of dollars oh, yeah, or something yeah. and of course you know Butch has tried to kill him off so that he can get he could get the rest the, yeah, the yeah. thing all of the riches these are the pencils that go for the the watercolor but, yeah. so before they get uh, traced off well the camera moves across paper. the camera moves across the camera moves across do they are they one I don't are they yeah uh, because yeah they they're long fields so yeah. they're two fields the one camera two. moves across yeah. So the camera would start here and move across. And well, there they are here, see? There he is there. Yeah. And then they walk across and over to here. Yeah. And he's about to kiss um, this person and, and the, the cow gets it. Yeah, so that would be um, Little Rural Riding Hood, which is a take on the ah, Red Riding Hood. That's so right. now, you know, like Sadie Hawkins Day, you know, they get the yeah. uh, the girl is now um, the, 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 the toothless yeah. Look at lady. This. Yeah. <laughs> not, nothing stops him. Outfoxed. Mm. <laughs> nice. Yeah. This again, this is all Tex Avery. This yeah. is how he would uh, he would do you know the because, uh, because he's got his hair, so mm. blaming him. 
<laughs> yeah, this was a common um, trope yeah. that they use. Yeah, and same with this. This is another one. Yeah, but that they use this that's funny. But cat. this is this is her- surreal. Yeah, and and the bird flies through it to yeah. to 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 make it yeah even, yeah. even funnier. Mm. And and look at this. He's got mm. a hole in his head and puts his finger right through his his ears, ears. through his eyes. Mm. I mean, that's just mm. that's just. Well, it's cartoon physics. Same yeah. with this, you know. He hits his fist. Yeah. Um, and he flattens it. Yeah, and turns it into... It hits it so hard that it's not only flat, but it's transparent. And, he, and it's floppy. And floppy. Yeah. And he swallowed a trumpet. Yeah. He's a chump champ. Yeah, so, the, you know, physics, cartoon physics, you conform to the object that you're swallowing. Yeah. So that's how that's how cartoon physics work. That's why they're so so much fun. Look at those eyes. Mm. Well, that's a send up of the um... seven dwarfs. Yeah, it looks like it. Well, it's Peachy Cobbler, so it'll be another story on, like um, you know, an old fairy tale. Yeah, something like that. Cockle Doodle Dog, uh, obviously, uh, you know, visited to much uh, um, acclaim with. Uh, Starts on the Fog mountain. Horn, horn later. Starts on the mountain, moves back a bit, see what it is, and then it just comes over here. Yeah. And then the, 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 this is the, um, the, the farmyard. Yeah, the setup. And it goes over to here. And then you have a close up. Yeah. Yeah, close shot. Establishing shot and then a close up. So this is uh, obviously like a. Uh, this is Daredevil Droopy. So, you know, this guy's trying to up the ante. They're competing with Droopy. They're both Daredevils. So this guy does like the the trick of um, you know shoot the cigarette out of my mouth. <laughs> he does this big smile, of yeah. course. It's, it's I like I teeth. like how the light of the teeth is sort of just turned there. Now yeah. this is interesting because he goes through the flame, and of course he's he's almost just a line. Well, he get he gets on a motorbike. He's and not black. Leaps he's, through this burning. Not, yeah, but he's not ring. black like they do in the Warner Brothers. Uh, he's he's just he's an outline, and the that's right, motorcycle turned outline, into a bicycle, which is so funny. Yeah. This is so funny. Mm. These are from, uh, yeah, he, Troopies. He gets burnt That's again. a really funny, except a, a little bit racially insensitive uh, film, Droopy's Good Deed. But this character of uh, Blackie, or, or Butch, has this incredible walk. You could see he steals this outfit to be a good, uh, you know, a Boy Scout, right? Oh, yeah. To meet the president. That's the idea. Of course, idea. it doesn't fit him. Yeah, it doesn't fit him. But he has this incredible walk that I, I love to show my uh, students yeah. every time. You just have to see this to believe it. It's just, a, it's just sheer joy watching this guy walk, you know. These are shots from, oh, that's Droopy's, uh, the end of uh, Good uh, Droopy's Good Deed. Yeah. These are shots from um, A Symphony of Slain. Yes. which are a, a, almost um, a treasury of 1950s design. It, it's just a, actually, jazz it, era. it's a film this about a bloke's life. Background. It's a film yeah. about a bloke's life right to the end. And, yeah. of course, it's just full this of him. puns that are, you know, like... Um, yeah, he kind of looks hanging like... Out, um, he's hanging out in, in, a, in a bar. That's what... Yeah. And the guy, that guy's hang. They're all hang. He's just, he's just hanging by the hand. He's actually physically hanging. Yeah. And then he, he, he goes to court and he gets life. Mm. He gives him a life magazine. Yeah. But it, that's it's a, just it's, puns. It's full of puns, and but they're jazz um, slang. Yes. But it's funny. Yeah. And it's corny, but it's funny. Mm. Oh, and that was The Car of Tomorrow. That's another film which uh, you yeah. have to see to believe. Yeah. Um, what else? Uh, Droopy's Double Trouble. It's interesting a, because the droopies. actual his his original drawings of that are so got this full of so much verve and movement, and yet they lose, don't they? When they're this, yeah, you're only capturing a, yeah, one no, one drawing. I know, but it's it just there's probably another twelve I, drawings that you need to yeah. complete that action, or twenty drawings. So this magical maestro is um, th- this this there's this trope there's this thing this gag where um there's a hair in the gate of of the film is is it in this film it's in this film the magical maestro yeah and he actually reaches out into the into the the audience right or into the the foreground yeah it pulls the hair out of the gate yeah because occasionally when the projector the actual projectionist is projecting the actual film yeah they'd get it before they start the film they clean the gate 
but occasionally there's a hair in there, a bit of dirt or something, yeah. gets caught in it, mm. and he actually drew, animated it actually in the animated picture, and mm. of course it caused havoc all over America because all the projectionists were complaining that they couldn't get rid of this hair in this, but, but they didn't realise it was drawn in there, and of course at the in the end of it he just leans out and pulls the thing out, but it caused you know, a huge, huge problem with their, their, their projectionists. They all complained bitterly. He wasn't allowed to do that after that. Mm. And these are all characters. He goes through these different musical um, yeah. uh, uh, variety in, in within one song. So it would, like, snap and morph into another character. Yeah, yeah. You wouldn't have to run off stage to do it. He'd just do it. Mm. Cute character. Mm. At cars. Yeah, well, that, what year is that? 1940... 1952, isn't 1952. Yeah. Okay, so it's, it's about the same time as a Disney short on, on a car. Yeah. Uh, let's see, so it was interesting. This is TV of Tomorrow. Yeah, so TV of Tomorrow, like House of Tomorrow. And, yeah. You know, I mean, uh, you can go fishing on watching TV and catch them. Yeah. 3D TV. Mm. And that, that's actually a live action plate yes. that they put into it. Yeah. So, you know, ex- that, always that would have been hard. Wouldn't that be hard to do, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. no, 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 but just a section of it, you know. This is little Johnny Jett, who was the inspiration for the um, our um, uh, aeroplane jelly uh, mascot, no, I think, no, wasn't it? No, no, no. Uh, early, earlier than that, um, Disney. Oh, was it? it they was did a Disney a plane. thing. Yeah, during the war, they did a thing about South America. A baby plane. Yeah. And look at this. He's. he's He's, he's been through hell. Oh, this is lovely. Isn't that a lovely sheet? Mm. You've never saw. You've never seen um, a droopy like that, have you? No, ever. Well, this is the three little pups. So instead of the three little pigs, the yeah. three little pups. So yeah. the wolf is. I think he's a. Um, this could be voiced by Dawes Butler. Well, he's a dog. Yeah, but a he could dog, be voiced. Dog collector, isn't he? He's yeah, a, he's a dog pound um, yeah. guy. You know, yeah. the the dog catcher. So that could even be voiced by Dawes Butler, who did the the um, uh, Huckleberry, Huckleberry Hound. Hound yeah. Well, actually, um, that's right. He's um, he did the prototype, didn't he? Mm. Didn't um, Avery do the prototype? Yeah. Well, it would be based on this. Yeah. That would be based on that. Yeah. Does that that is the the essence of the inspiration for Huckleberry Hound. Mm. That's lovely. That'd be the the, the establishing shot. Mm. That sheep. Drag along Droopy, yeah. yeah. But you know, they it's, it, just to show you what's what's going on here. This is for cinema. Yeah. So it's on the big screen, full color, Technicolor. Yeah. So that's why this level of uh, detail is required. Yeah. You know, you wouldn't see that in TV cartoons but, because it's dealing. But with but he actually screen. got so carried away that he actually got rid of the, the backgrounds in a lot of stuff. Yeah. Well, back in going yeah. towards the you know, especially in the surreal the when the action era. became really fast in that. Well, Disney also did the same thing, you know, and oh yeah, uh, UPA, UPA came along, had a yeah. very big influence on yeah. most of the studios, including uh, MGM, Warner Brothers, and uh, Disney. Yeah. So well, you can see his style is changing too, can't you? Like he's um, he's cartoonized the um, red, hasn't mm. he? Well, she's now she's a little bird. Yeah. So she's a different character. So they've changed the style of um, all of the characters, including Blackie and yeah. uh, Droopy. So all of the characters would be somewhat simplified, you know. But again, you know, this is a film which I haven't seen, 1955, Field and Scream. Field and Scream, which is based on the Field and Stream magazine, magazine yeah. and um, uh, uh, documentaries. Yes, so like he's, the bird is shot. Yeah. And then the bird jumps out. Yeah. He jumps out of his feathers yeah. and, and parachutes to safety. Da, 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 da. Yeah. yeah. And we are in UPA territory now, aren't we? Yeah. Well, it's Deputy Droopy. And look at the eyes. Yeah. So stylized, more stylized, but again, relying on the extremes that are, of course, the, the, the mainstay of, um, of text. He's a life member. Yeah. Yeah. Cell bound. Well, this book originally, as I said, was um, mm. it was done in France, and a couple of years yeah. later, it was um, well, the publishers the, on the end paper. All, all these, all, the, all these, all these pictures picked that up. Yeah. 
So, JG Press, yeah. uh, you can still find this uh, about the author, John Kane Maker. Kane Maker, yes. And um, with uh, opening um, remarks by Chuck Jones and uh, William Hanna. Bill Hanna, of course, from Hanna Barbera. Yep. So, this is um, Tex Avery, and um, let's don't break the back of the book, let's have a look at the, uh, the front again, and we'll say goodbye. So this is a brilliant book. This is a, um, a really. Um, you have to you have to check him out. If you've never be. heard of him, you have to check him out. Yeah, you just at have least to. jump onto um, you know just bookmark a few of the cartoons on YouTube. And yeah, be fine. Yeah, and you can and look, really the enjoy his by William Hanna and the introduction by Chuck Jones. Yeah, which I've now said four times. I know, but I mean, you <laughs> know, that's that's important. It's important. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. This is uh, Tex Avery and um, Jim Bridges and Franz Cantor, and I'll catch you around next time. Bye bye. Thanks for the sour persimmons, cousin.